how did you come about to do this movie? What was your, your relationship uh, was with Lawrence Kazan and with William Hurt as well? Well, in truth, you know, that was the first film I ever did. And um, I had no film experience. So when I first tried to audition for the role in New York, I was not allowed to audition because the casting directors told, you know, said she has no film experience, it's a waste of our time. <laughs> so several months passed and I went out to Los Angeles to do a screen test for a different film and the, the woman, the, in New York they were men, in the, in the woman who was casting the film in Los Angeles you know, called me and said, uh, now I want you to come in, you know, and read for this. So I did, I went in, I read for her, and she said, don't go anywhere, you're staying right here. And she went and she got Larry Kazin and she got Fred Gallo, the producer, and brought them back, and um, so I read for them. Then I went away, and they called me and said, they asked me to come back the next day to read a scene that uh, has no one had seen yet. Larry had just written this and I said of course so um, I went back and they gave me the pages and I I read them and there was great quiet and then Larry said I never thought I would hear that out loud as I hear it in my head so the next thing was to do a screen test with Bill and if we had chemistry together which we did yes <laughs> then Obviously. we went ahead Oh, yeah, you, know, you, know, you know what, Rachel, like, yeah, Rachel, yeah. Rachel's going to handle the second part of your question. The first part of the question, I'll refer to something I said that has been misquoted my entire career. So get it right. Okay, I said, when, when I walk into a room and feel really good about myself, any man who doesn't look at me is probably gay. All that happened, all that happened was they said, any man, any man who doesn't look at me. You know, they, they left out that when I walk into a room and feel really good about, that's sexy. Sexy is feeling good about yourself. That's the point, you know? So get it right now, guys, okay? Now the second part of your question goes to her. Uh, with regard to Miley Cyrus's performance, I think, uh, I think she's doing the best she can and what her... Yeah. No, but what say her what you said upstairs. Okay, right, what, what, I was, said. Okay, what yeah, I was saying upstairs, which it's, it's, it's the cultural appropriation of what's called like ratchet culture and, and it's... Uh, it's. Told you she knew. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I mean, just, this is, it's this appalling is a, that this a very much, rich yes. white girl is, uh, who well, is hijacking... Yes. But, yes. Uh, yes, but I don't think it's actually any of her really decision making. I oh. I think she is. I think she is. Well, that's uh, a shame. I think she is doing what pretty much I think most of popular culture is doing right now, which is relying upon uh, more of a publicity stunt. Than, uh, than talent. The, the, yeah, than performance. Right. It's more about yeah, entertainment right. value. Talent. And no, I, you know, yeah, well, she said it right. I think everybody, uh, everybody, I think that is that is involved in <laughs> contemporary popular culture and the music scene is has a massive degree, a massive amount of talent. I don't think it is ever. I it is that. usually used to its fullest, and I think a lot of the people are doing things not for the art of making music or performing in a certain yeah. way, but doing it for uh, the effect of their their name in a paper or uh, their image on the internet. Bon. And I think that's what that performance that's your is answer. about.